Okay, I'm good on my end. Yeah, and I'm in the game study. Um, before we start, I'm just going to say because since this will be on YouTube, if anyone is looking for a chess coach, Alessandro is accepting new students. So um, best way to contact him is probably just on Lee Chess. Just send him a message. Um, he's also on the the coaches page on Lee Chess if you want to read some more details about his coaching. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so I am here in the study. Okay. Um, hello, all. <laughs> hello, everyone. Uh, I've been skimming through your games. You played a lot of them uh, since last time we met. <laughs> and you're having great results. You're actually doing pretty well in the 2000 threshold, 2000 to... Uh, 2,100 threshold. Your your next goal is to go to 2,100. Yeah, again. that's the milestone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're close. Uh, you got up to uh, 2,070. 79. 70, yeah. 79. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, but who's counting, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, that, I. Yeah, I had actually some pretty good games in the past two or three days. There were some pretty good games. Uh, one or two of them I blundered in the end game, but otherwise I thought there were, I kind of enjoyed some of them. But, um... They were very good games. Actually, uh, Chapter 40 is a very good game mm. uh, of yours uh, that I wanted to uh, to highlight here. <laughs> we we're going to go through that one. Uh, I want to start... Uh, with chapter 41. Okay. Because it showcases a, a defense that you've been having some trouble with, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, accelerated Dragon. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I... um, You know, okay, so the Accelerated Dragon, I know... Let me just tell you what I know, okay? So I don't know too much about it. I know maybe... I don't know eight or eight to ten moves of theory here um but i don't really know a whole lot of the underlying ideas of it i went to youtube to kind of sometimes i will watch videos on an opening if if i don't understand what's going on but i couldn't really find much there there's a few videos but i didn't really i didn't really like them or i didn't find them helpful um the only thing that i kind of know is that um as far as I understand, white pretty much will always castle kingside, which is kind of rare in the Sicilian. And, uh, well, that's pretty much all I know. <laughs> like, I don't really have any ideas because my the normal ideas in the Sicilian of kind of the English attack of F3, G4, and, you know, and queenside castling, that, as far as I know, that doesn't happen in the accelerated um, dragon. Yeah, that's a problem, man. You don't uh, have those plans available anymore, <laughs> and that, and I thought that's uh, maybe why you are uncomfortable with this. Actually, you play uh, the Maroxi fine, yeah. uh, and well, playing C4 and E4 uh, leads to a very difficult, uh, difficult, sorry, very different uh, type of struggle. If you play these two moves, you're getting a lot of space in the center. That's the first thing. But also it gives a lot of breaks uh, for black. Black wants to prepare d5 or b5 most probably because uh, against the Maroxi bind it's very difficult to get d5 in. Um, the thing is, it's very difficult that you're going actually to get uh, that you're actually going to get the chance to just throw everything at your opponent because you're already kind of overextended in the center. Uh, if you play c4 and e4, well, that's right. Uh, but then if you go h4, h5, maybe you are overdoing it a little bit too much. Um, if you have a pawn on c2, you have the opportunity of playing knight c3, bishop e3, queen d2, f3, g4, and go for, well, uh, um, the Yugoslav attack, I guess it's called in the dragon, the normal dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, but not here with c4. This is... Um, this leads the game to a different uh, kind of struggle, a more positional one, uh, where maneuvers tend to to be the, the way of playing it. And that's, I guess that's what annoys you about this uh, variation. It's very maneuvery. You just 
uh, you have to go with your pieces uh, from one side to the other. Uh, sometimes you play knight c3, bishop b3, queen b2, then rook b1, bishop b2, the other rook goes to c1, then rook c2. It's a kind of, um, it looks like a Rui Lopez, <laughs> uh, since you just shuffle your pieces from one side to the other. And, uh, that might be the reason wh why you are not comfortable with it. I'm going to give you an option and just uh, so that you can adjust this opening to your uh, to your way of playing. Uh, bishop g7. I mean, of course, you can go knight c3 here instead uh, of yeah, and playing rook c. And then that does that usually transpose into a, a dragon, a normal dragon? Uh, sort of. Because after bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, I believe is moved. Um, well, if you play bishop e2, then d5 is an issue. I, I think you can still play bishop e2 here. And then after, after casting, here comes the problem for white. Uh, Black didn't play d6. He hasn't played these seats up to this point. So the idea of black in the accelerated dragon is that he's going to play d5 in just one move. He didn't play these seats, so he has the opportunity of playing d5, which is a strategic. So, uh, so the dragon thing. is always uh, d6. It's not knight c6, right? In the normal dragon. Yeah, in the okay. normal dragon, you play d6. Okay. That's why this is called accelerated dragon. Uh, uh, Black forgoes this d6 move so that he can get in that d5 in just one move. Um, well, now I believe that knight d3 is the main move because you well uh, you prevent d5 right away. But the position uh, has a different character to to mm -hmm. those attacking thrusts by white with h4 g4. I believe Black can play a5 here. And it's a little bit messy. It's really different from the usual uh, dragon. Um, so uh, that's why the, um, the accelerated dragon is known to be a more positional weapon for, for black. And those who don't wish to get uh, uh, to be up against a very strong attack by white with h4, h5, and stuff like that, opt for the accelerated dragon instead of the regular dragon. <laughs> Uh, c4, bishop g7, bishop d3. Well, all of this is pretty standard. And knight f6, knight c3. Mm -hmm. And now d6. Now black plays d6, but you can't get away with your normal attacking ways <laughs> with bishop e2 and h4, h5, I don't know, f3, g4, because you have this c4 already in. Um, you're not going to get to castle queen side with the mm -hmm. pawn on c4. <laughs> uh, so the plans are very different now. You play f3 here, which is perfectly possible. Uh, it's not the main move at this point, but it could easily transpose. I'm going to suggest something different to you. That's why uh, I want to discuss a little here. Uh, we're going to deviate uh, a bit from the original game. Um, well, you told me that you studied a little bit about this, uh, this structure in the um, uh, in the accelerated dragon. What did you see here in the videos you went through? Well, the, no, the videos re were really not helpful. They uh, so oh. I, I I kind of watched like ten minutes of of three to four of them, but they they were just not helpful. They were. Um, at all yeah yeah <laughs> okay. they really weren't uh, normally i can find good videos that help and there was actually a, a a lecture like the top video was a lecture by yasser sarawan but i think it the video kind of deviated from the main lines and it wasn't very that it wasn't that helpful for me oh, okay but also uh, i think in this position i don't think this is a main response by black i could be wrong um is what? it the, um, um I, I mean i'm probably wrong but like is, is d6 the, is d6 the main the main line here i thought it 
might be or otherwise let's see the uh, oh, knight g4 is another big oh, option. Yeah. yeah, castling is a top move here. Yeah, mm -hmm. castling, knight g4, and this sits. Yeah, so, so I think... And, yeah. I was just going to say, I think I'm used to castling and then bishop e2. And um, yeah. and this is about as far as I know in theory. And then I just I just kind of, you know, we I know that we have to castle kingside. And then after this type of position, I'm kind of without an idea. I often... Um, I don't know. I often try to slowly swap these bishops out, but same side casting. I'm really, I'm really kind of confused what to do here. I, I often will put the rook on c1 and maybe b3, but this knight gets a little bit iffy. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm a little confused. I've said that when I play the game on stream, I'm like, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to watch that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, before everything. I think that castling and these seats are probably transpositional okay. because if you pick castles, you go to be two these seats looks to be the yeah it seems to be the uh, the main move so you're going you're probably going to transpose okay it's yeah not very different if you castles and then just place these seats uh, I just went with the game so after this mm -hmm. seat ninety four okay. is an independent option that uh, well it has to be studied. Um, just on its own. What well, you mean, knight, knight g4 here? Knight g4 here. Well, yeah. I know in the dragon and the peer, it's often. Well, here you can just take the knight though, because it's the d6 is. Yeah, open. you. You take, and then uh, knight takes. Yeah. This is well. This is a, a diff just a different line. Uh, uh, the character of the game is a bit different. Yeah, yeah. This is really different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, well, this seeds. Now you play the f3. Uh, mm. Bishop b2 is still a main move, though it can be transposition. I wanted to no. get here. Uh, up, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, bishop b2 makes perfect sense. I mean, I I probably just did this more out of habit than anything else. But bishop, you know, we're defending. Um, yeah. Well, no, I, well, are we defending the? Because then this is attacked twice. Yeah, yeah I guess it, maybe it works out equal. This might transpose. Let me see. Knight G4. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can't I take here? Knight takes C6, Knight takes C3 is always a Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Annoying. <laughs> uh, but this is a different uh, variation. This can also be played. <laughs> I don't know if this actually transposes to to what we yeah. saw earlier. Uh, but like now, it. now knight takes is it seems to be the move. There are a couple uh, of games by grandmasters, but white is doing fine here. It's I wonder about this. After I don't bishop, know. bishop takes, b takes, and bishop takes d one, knight takes queen. Oh, you're a piece up. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you end up winning a piece here. Well, that's not the solution then. Mm. There's queen d7 here. There's still this move. Oh, but f3, f3, and yeah. Yeah, white white ends up mm. winning a piece here. Mm. But. Apparently, after bishop e2, knight g4 is not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, then castles. You also castle. Uh, well, this is a very topical position. That's why I wanted to get here. Uh, maybe after some f3, you're going to transpose, and that's fine. Uh, the main move here is bishop d7. I want to look at it from black's perspective first, because you have to know what black is aiming for. You mentioned the plan with queen d2 and then uh, bishop h6 to trade bishops. But that's actually what black is looking for. Um, it, may seem, it may seem paradoxical because uh, the g7 bishop is just so important in the, in the um, dragon. Uh, but the thing is, black is aiming for total domination of the dark squares. He wants to dominate dark squares. and. Now that's especially the case since you played c4. 
uh, this C4 move actually softens up a couple of very important squares before and before. So black has no um, no objections about trade of dark squared bishops. He's actually happy about that. And in the main line with queen d2, black actually goes knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, and now bishop c6, hitting the pawn on e4. And this is why I said you could easily transpose because now f3 is uh, the normal way of defending that pawn. And then, well, there are a couple of uh, perfectly playable moves here, but a5 is the main move. Uh, yeah, I, actually, yeah. I, I was just going to say, in this type of position, it, um, I'm thinking that white probably needs to play on the queen side. Would that be right? I mean, that's kind of, I mean, kind of what the position is suggesting to me. I don't think we can do a whole lot on the king side. And, you know, we've got these, I don't know, it just seems like this is the way to go. Um, do you, would that be a yeah, general idea? Uh, Actually, it very much depends on what both do uh, from now. There are a lot of ideas here. For example, Black is trying to put a dead block <laughs> on the on the queen side. His idea is to play knight d7. This knight is going to c5, where it's very well placed. Uh, before it's very well defended, so kicking the knight out with b4 is uh, is going to take a lot of work from from White. And then queen b6, maybe even queen b4. If you play b3, a4 is a thing, trying to break up your pawn structure. So, and, well, of course, the bishops are, uh, well, at least black wants to trade bishops because that increases black's control of the dark squares. And if you don't have this bishop with black, uh, with white, I'm sorry, uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble uh, just covering up all the dark squares that are left uh, somewhat weak. After c4, this is something you have to remember, your dark squares are a bit softened up. And that's what Black is aiming to exploit here. Uh, that's his main idea. Actually, after b3, d7, oh, uh, I'm sorry, as for an attack on the queen side or king side, sometimes white goes for knight d5, and after the exchange here, bishop takes d5, he takes with the e pawn. Mm -hmm. That's because he wants to get the e file open to gang up on the pawn on e7, and uh, to divide the board on two clearly separated sides. Uh, yeah, he's going to have some trouble defending against b5, his thrust, and um, was well, softening up this point. But you also get an attack with f4, f5, because you're opening up a lot of uh, lines there on the king side. Uh, so, as you can see, you can play on both sides. Really depends on how the game goes. <laughs> uh, at this point, the play is very concentrated on centralizing your PC. Uh, and now, what do you think is the move for white? Well, immediately, you know, I'm tempted to take the bishop. I'm tempted to trade the bishop. I'm just so used to taking out that um, fiancado bishop. Um, that would be the, f my, the first thing I would consider. Well, uh, the funny thing is, uh, we always want to trade this bishop. The g7 bishop is a great piece, uh, especially in a dragon. But white usually plays bishop e3 here. Believe it or not, uh, the point being, point being that uh, if you trade bishops here, then black is going to have a very nice brocade on the dark squares. Uh, I'm not saying that white is worse uh, or anything like that, but black's play is kind of clear now. I mean, knight c5, queen b6, uh, with the idea of a4 maybe. Uh, the rooks come to c8, d8, and it's difficult to suggest anything for white because when you play knight d5 and bishop takes d5, 
and you end up with this bad bishop against a very good knight on c5. That's typically the idea for black uh, in these situations. That's his uh, main strategical goal. Of course, he always has to be on the lookout for this kind of attack. Um, but if you trade bishops here, I think as far as theory goes, uh, this is considered to be very solid for black. And even it's white who is um, taking all the strategical risk. Uh, that's why people go back to e3 with the bishop here. And now a very, very dense, very maneuvering game. Uh, and that's something that I was thinking about what to suggest to you here, but uh, as you already said, <laughs> you don't like uh, these long maneuvers, these slow games. If I'm correct, I, uh, I, uh, one of the things that you didn't like about the Nimso Indian, for example, was that both sides tend to castle on the same side. And uh, normally, it's very positional, very strategical game. Um, but you know, uh, I well, I've, I've learned to, I'm, I'm uh, definitely a lot more comfortable with the Nimso now. Like, uh, I actually get a lot of enjoyable games out of it. Um, only if I'm able to double the pawns. If I can double the pawns, there's a lot of um, slower positional Karpovian type moves, which are, is actually, I actually find very kind of peaceful. Um, something that's kind of interesting, and I, I could be wrong about this self-evaluation, but um, when I was younger, like a kid, and when I started playing again, as an adult, I always thought that I was more of a tactical player. Um, and the funny thing is, I, most of my openings are, most of my openings are sharper openings. That I like to play sharper lines. But the funny thing is, I actually think, I actually think that I might be a lot better positionally than I am tactically. Like, cause I'm a really poor um, calculator and uh, my vision is really poor. But I actually think that my, Positional play might be better than my tactical play, even though I enjoy the sharper openings. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens a lot. Uh, what I see of, uh, about your game is that you have a good knowledge of where your pieces go in your system. Uh, you really know uh, not only a theory, but also the general uh, layout of the pieces. Uh, you know your schemes very well, and that. Actually, that's actually very helpful, uh, positionally speaking. Uh, that's something I noticed, for example, uh, about your play in the Nidor. You seem to be very comfortable with it, um, and you don't face you, you don't usually face many troubles there. Um, yeah, I think that this uh, variation being a little bit different from your what you're accustomed. Uh, to, uh, mm. that's that might be the reason why you're having some trouble with this. Uh, but well, now uh, black usually goes knight c5, and now a lot of um, prophylactic moves uh, start to be played. Rook a b1, for example. This is the absolute main move. Uh, this or rook a c1. Mainly because after queen b6, which is again very very mainline move, <laughs> uh, you're very well prepared in case black wants to play a4. And if you had you played rook a c1, they, then a4 would still be hanging there in the air. And a4 is very annoying because it threatens a takes b3, <laughs> and and it's actually very difficult to prevent. But now, after a4, you always have b4, of course. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very slow maneuvering position. Usually, white plays rook fc1, so you have this knight well defended. And as you can see, it's I don't know if it's the sort of game that will suit you best. <laughs> uh, it's a very slow play. I hate my I hate my light squared bishop. I, I, I know that. <laughs> and I know that's a common yeah. theme in the Meroxy bind. Usually the light squared bishop doesn't do a whole lot. Usually it's on D three. 
Yeah, you even put it on F1 mm. uh, normally so that it it just doesn't interfere with the rest of your pieces. What's a little uh, bit annoying here is it totally feels like black is the one that's dictating play. It seems like white is reacting to black and black is <laughs> showing who's boss here. I feel like, yeah. yeah. you have to unravel and, and it takes time. It takes a lot of maneuvering around with your pieces. I'm really used to playing this kind of stuff because I'm a hedgehog player. I play mm -hmm. this hedgehog structure every time I get the chance <laughs> against uh, the Maroxy blind, for example. And I played many lines where white has to uh, maneuver his pieces slowly. And uh, yeah, once you get your pieces where they want, where, where you want them, um, uh, and you contain, uh, your, you prevent your opponent's play, then you're free to maybe even get an advantage. But it takes time and, and it takes patience, and it's a different ball game. It's it's not, uh, it's definitely not neither. That's why I was going to suggest you um, another way of approaching this because so that that's kind of it sounds almost like, uh, like Petrosian style. Um. Your style, it almost sounds like Petrosian. Yeah, I wish. Uh, <laughs> At least I try. <laughs> but, but do you like but, his style? Do you? Do you... Yeah, I, well, Petrosian is... Uh, Petrosian is very, was very creative. I, if I had to choose uh, three <laughs> or four uh, favorite players, Petrosian would surely be there because he had so many refreshing ideas. And some of game, his games are just, well, it causes envy. I mean, how can you win so easily? Look, it was like uh, like what Carson is doing today. Some wins, some wins by him were just, I don't know. You, you, you look at the game and you say, what, where did his opponent go wrong? Mm. And... That's what amazes mm. me. And yeah, the guy just maneuvered his pieces around. At some point, he was a little bit better. And then everything seems to collapse. That's it. Mm. Like what happened, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, you can even identify where it <laughs> went wrong. And that's, uh, that's something. That, that's amazing. Mm. That's something admirable. <laughs> um, but... I was going to suggest a different approach because you might not enjoy a game like this. Um, and well, that's. So are you thinking? Not, are you thinking knight c three instead of c four? Uh, not really. Even here, you can play more aggressively. Uh, going through this, I noticed that. Well. After, in this position, both castles. And well, because I, I, well, yeah. in this position here, as soon as I castle, this is where I have no idea what to do. So, um, this is I even just in this position, this is where I'm completely clueless. Yeah, I'm going. I was going to uh, an aggressive Maroxi kind of uh, kind of like a Grand Prix. Yeah, this I, is. I mean. So I just want to say, I, I know I hate playing against the Grand Prix in the Sicilian. That's the most annoying opening I think that I face is this like F4, <laughs> like, like, a, like a knight C3, like, a, like uh, if I'm black, if white plays like knight C3 and then F4, I hate playing against that. It's so annoying. I hate it. Well, uh, that's interesting. And that's something that we're going to cover then because it's not that great for white. I mean, there's, there's a reason why... Uh, White doesn't uh, play it so often at a very high level, uh, but I'm I'm going to remember that. <laughs> we okay. have to go through some of your games in the back <laughs> bit. Uh, well, this is a Maroxy vine. F4 is usually called uh, the aggressive Maroxy. Well, okay. Bishop this I put Bishop D7, uh, Bishop D7 because it's it's really the main move. There's also Knight takes d4, but after bishop takes, black is probably going to play this way anyway because it's his main plan. And so bishop d7, and now f4. It might look a little bit crazy, <laughs> uh, and you take up a lot of space. Of course, you are 
you might be overextending, but uh, time will tell. <laughs> and now, well, um, as far as I saw, he usually follows with his idea, which makes sense because if you play bishop d7, then a knight takes d4 and bishop c6 is the way to go, probably. And now bishop f3. Um, it's not that you're going to just steamroll your opponent, but your idea is to go queen e2, rook fd1, maybe if it's necessary, rook a d1. At some point, you have knight d5 or e5. After e5, there's a possibility that a majority appears on the queen side if your opponent takes on e5. Um, it's interesting. I wanted to go through a game by Shiro, which I think it's very, it's very instructive because uh, it really shows how many attacking ideas white can have. For example, knight d7, the main idea for white, and now you take, now you have more control of the dark squares, and you're playing, playing in an aggressive mood. <laughs> uh, a5, rook a d1. We're going to go uh, pretty quickly through this game, but it gives you an idea of what white is aiming for. Rook f d8, up to this point, very natural, and now knight d5. And this this is a structure we were talking about. You have a bad bishop, <laughs> uh, but black's king is kind of uncovered here because, well, after the exchange of bishops, he might have a little bit of trouble. Rook f E1, F5 are all ideas that Black has to take care of. Yeah, uh, I, I was almost just looking at F5 immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, well, it's going to. Oh, uh, I think Shiro used a different device here, which is useful also to remember. Rook A8, B3, A4, Black played aggressively, Queen C3. Looks odd, but uh, you're going to defend the pawn on B3 with. Uh, King G8. Just wondering why not. Uh, D1. Yeah. I was just saying, I wonder why um, Queen C3, not Queen B2. Uh, yeah. Queen B2. I'm not really sure, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that from C3, it's easier to get. Queen to the king side. And I believe that's what happened at some point in the game. I, I'm not saying that she up to, mm -hmm. I don't know, g3 or queen h3. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But since he's going to play on the queen side, on the king side, I'm sorry, then maybe it makes sense to have access to g3 or h3. Um, king g8, rook d1, and now you're hitting e7 all of a sudden. Um, well, black was a little bit slow in this uh, rook e8, and now bishop g4. It's another important resource. Um, queen c7, and now f5. And you're opening up the position. And now white has serious advantage. Uh, well, he went f6 and just collapsed. <laughs> Well, now, now we see why the queen was on G3. On C3, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Five bishop takes, G takes, rook takes. This was Shiro at his best. <laughs> rook G5, queen is sits, and well, now he's going yeah. to checkmate G8. Uh, but as far as this, uh, this is more straightforward way of playing this variation and not getting caught in that maneuvering uh, sort of position. Yeah, well, there's a, a major difference in terms of if you had to ask like before who is dictating play, I would say 100% black. It just felt like it, like white was totally reacting. Yeah. And now this totally seems like it's been totally flipped and this is all white dictating what's going to happen and black responding. So like, I, I yeah, definitely it, noticed the difference there. It might uh, appeal to you more because of your style, I guess. 
That's why I was looking for some aggressive choices here for I, white, and there are not many, but this structure might be. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious. Um, F four. So it's it's not it's hardly ever played, hey. I'm just looking at the book here. It's like yeah, there are some specialists. I'm Krasenko is uh, a top grandmaster yeah. that uh, always plays F four. Oh yeah, I just see it. I got four games here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there are even more in chess base database <laughs> i believe uh yeah it's his pet line he hasn't he didn't have that so many great results with it uh but it looks playable uh, there were a lot of games uh, by him either way i take bishop takes bishop c6 bishop f3 and well i put another game by him that i thought it was uh very um very instructive because the moves were very natural. A5 is an that you could place instead of 97. So um, if I could yeah. just interrupt here. Uh, so the idea of F4, is it really just to basically just, why are you just trying to push bulldoze right through the center? Is that like if white, if yeah. white, if I had um, like three f free moves here, um, is, is that kind of the idea? Um, like, you know, kind of bringing in the rooks and, just bulldozing, right? Blowing up the center? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's more uh, straightforward. <laughs> Much more straightforward than than the usual maneuvering. Because once you play F3, it's very difficult to get F4 in. Uh, of course, you also uh, keep more pieces over the board, and it's just a different sort of game. Now you're trading more pieces uh, and more quickly, but uh, you also get more, um, your development is easier, it's, it's mm -hmm. much easier to find good yeah. spots for your PC. And it our light, of more natural. Yeah, and yeah. our light squared bishop is, is doing something, it's in the game, it has a job, before it had no job, but it's a pawn yeah. on F3, yeah. Uh, in the other variations, you have to know uh, about the specific position just to get by. That's what I I didn't like about uh, the main lines because that rook AB1, rook FC1, rook C2, all that maneuvering, it's just so subtle. And once you don't put a piece where it belongs, uh, it gets very difficult for white. That's, what, uh, that's what's so uncomfortable about playing this with white. And that's why I like this approach. I mean, the pieces go to natural squares, yeah, no. and then you just push. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I like it. Um, yeah, I'd be totally fine with with uh, adapting or adopting uh, F4, putting that into my repertoire. I just, with, the, with the, the first main line that you showed me, I just don't like black dictating, telling me what to do. I just don't like, I don't like that. Like, I, I'm white. I should be, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And that goes for a long time because white... Uh, makes a lot more moves like that mm -hmm. <laughs> for uh, for many more moves we saw up to rook fc1 but then rook c2 bishop f1 even bishop f2 or queen f2 uh yeah it's very slow it's very slow play yeah white is banking on the fact that he has a space advantage and he says hey i get to maneuver all i want here but black is very active and has good uh, dark square control and uh, as you say, he's detecting play uh, for at least for the first 15, 20, up to 20 moves. So, uh, yeah, that's something I always found very annoying about this variation mm. uh, for white. Uh, that's why I like this approach. I don't know. At least it's easier to find a way uh, to bring your pieces out uh, to reasonable squares. But here, Black played another common idea, a4, with the idea of bringing the queen uh, to a5, which you might encounter. And now we fight. This is the, the other idea by white. <laughs> uh, 97. Well, on this occasion, he played 97. And that might not be that great. Though, after d takes f takes maybe and if 97 you always get it um yeah that might be a problem for black i guess 
um, well, it, it's up to calculate to a specific and very precise calculation, but even the takes, bishop takes seems uh, reasonable. I don't know. Uh, 97. And now the game went bishop takes, he sits, b takes, he sits, e takes, he sits, and you have a weakness to, to pounce there. Uh, well, queen f2, because if rook takes, then queen c5 check. <laughs> So first queen of two, and um, well, black is in trouble. He has many weaknesses here. Um, Sorry, I was just I was just taking a peek. Uh, I'm just wondering why, why not queen e seven? Queen e seven. Yeah. Ah, seven. Um, let's see if I know. Maybe queen c5 check, um, yeah. king h1, knight f6. And um, he's hitting the pawn on c4. So, well, you have rook takes d6 there. Knight g4, no, rook takes d6. Hmm. It seems playable. Yeah, if you get away with. Let's see. E7. Uh, maybe queen b6 check and then take in on e2. I'm almost wondering, I'm almost wondering uh, queen a7 check and then queen knight f6. f6. Something like queen that. Knight f6. Yeah, no. but you can take the pawn on these seats, and I don't know if there's compensation there. Um, no, but uh, yeah, was... like like queen a7, king h1, knight f6, I was thinking. <laughs> then the queen has to move. Yeah, but... Oh, here, take... uh, right, sorry, sorry, yeah. I was thinking about this... Uh, sharp line here with queen takes v2 <laughs> and see what happens mm. uh, i'm not sure what's going on with uh oh but if knight e4 i guess he can play rook a e8 and if queen takes this end the rook takes only four yeah i was worried about knight e4 but now i think he has one rook to e8 and the queen takes d7 rook takes e4 yeah um yeah, everything's yeah. hanging yeah. for both <laughs> yeah yeah i don't I guess know what probably un about. unneeded risk queen e7 yeah it's unnecessary it's bit, maybe uh, yeah now he gets to just uh tap to that path Queen d4 check and well if queen takes this seats queen takes b2 it's similar to what because the knight on c3 is hanging too so this might be reasonable here um well the, the pawn on this seats is falling and the knight of is not safe at all there are no squares for him uh on the center of the ball um he can get uh, uh, well defended post so so well he this is close to being capitulation by by black uh all the pounds started to fall and he lost very quickly after this um uh, but i like the direct approach just as a as a reasonable solution to uh to this very nasty, very problematic defense. <laughs> um, actually, the game went F, you played f3, he castled, queen d2, uh, bishop d7, and h4. And this is what, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is too much. <laughs> yeah, I told you I didn't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I didn't know what I'm doing. Uh... If your bishop was on c4 instead of your pawn, <laughs> and the pawn was still on c2, then that's fine. You are in the dragon, but 
Uh, yeah, you're not going to castle anywhere here. At least you're not going to be safe. Um, well, knight h5 was very annoying. <laughs> uh, rook g1, knight g3. And you castle into it, as we say, mm -hmm. <laughs> rook c8. And yeah, this is a tough defense. Uh, if you have to go b3, and you probably have to. <laughs> um, yeah, he's breaking through very quickly. You, yeah. This might. I mean, most probably, yeah, now it's low. Um, but it's, it's very interesting how difficult these positions are to handle uh, without very specific knowledge of where the pieces go and um, mm -hmm. what type of game you're facing. Because uh, if you want to go into the main line, as you saw, you have to play a lot of long maneuvers and not yeah. uh, So I leave you that option. I'm going to unlock it because then you'll be able to see it. I'm going to go in normal analysis mode here. Yeah, so everything's revealed. <laughs> uh, in the comments to uh, what happened here? I'm um, sorry. The, something's wrong. It should be true. This seat was playing the game, I yeah. Yeah, I, I think the main line, uh, the annotations just. Uh, yeah, now, now it's good. Here, uh, in the comments to uh, three, I put this bishop e2 and those two models. We talk about one by Shirov and the other one by Krasenko. And that can be a guide uh, to just get that kind of position. Actually, I got the idea of uh, looking at this f4 because I play a hedgehog. I don't play the dragon uh, or the accelerated dragon, none of that. But I play the Khan Sicilian. E6 mm -hmm. and Bishop E7 if I sit. Sometimes I face the Maroxi and people throw everything at me with uh -huh. F4. And that actually is uh, a valid way of approaching the, uh, that opening. I was just going to say, very annoying. I was just going to say yeah. the can is actually similar um, because can is, I think, white also castles uh, king side in the can. Um, yeah, in many variations, he yeah, castles king. Yeah, so it's, it's actually a lot it's similar. In some ways, yeah, it's still very aggressive because uh, white castles king side and he then throws he then throws everything at you <laughs> either way <laughs> f four four and you have to cope with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, white always has uh, attacking chances in the stadium if he um, if he's willing to to take the risk of mm. throwing everything at you. Uh, Aggressive Maroxi is kind of annoying and it requires very um, very accurate, very uh, sharp game by Black. Uh, you you can't make a nothing move and expect to live. <laughs> and that's a, that's actually a problem. That's why I don't like when people play FRG4 and then mm. throw at the throw all the pounds. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's an option, I guess. Uh, I'm going to leave you those two games to go through. Um, well, I wanted to take a look at this game, okay. chapter 14, mm -hmm. because the world should see this game. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think it's one of the best games I saw I saw you play. Uh, it was a very against a very good player here. Uh, it's a 2000, near 2000. It was a Taras. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, uh, Taras, um, French Taras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you seem to be very comfortable. In yeah, I mean, that, I, I, I'm not sure if I told you before, but I've said it on my stream many times. The best decision I've made repertoire wise was uh, I used to play Knight C3 uh, French, and then I just 
the winner were just a pain in the ass to play against. I, I just <laughs> yeah. got sick of it. And then I, I just decided try, to try the, the Tarash variation. Best decision I've made. I, I just love every position um, that comes out of it. I, I understand the ideas of, you know, um, as you can see, yeah. Like I just totally understand the ideas. Later on, there's always key ideas of putting a knight on F4 if black miss, missteps. Um, and then we always have a good uh, attack on his on the king side. And the funny thing is, in this position you see right here, I found that many players, because first of all, a lot of black players don't even know the Tarash, or they know it maybe mm -hmm. just a few moves in, because almost everyone plays knight c3 or the advanced French. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so a lot of people don't know theory too much, and a very, very natural looking move here is bishop e7, which a lot of people play, or they'll play it like, like I, I, I say oh, like 80% at least uh, will play bishop e7, and it's not, and it's a very natural looking move, but um, it's, yeah, the main line I believe here is, is F6, but anyways, yeah, I, I love, to go. this was a great decision. This was the best repertoire decision I've made so far, switching from knight c3 to knight d2. It's working very well. Uh, and now, oh, you should be said to go to castle and then he blocked Fc. Oh, and yeah. now after night. Yeah, so this game is just like one or two days old, I think, right? But, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. it's very recent. I really like this game. I, I, mm. I think it it deserved to be here on the stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was very neat. I really like you didn't run point. You just kept your light square bishop. Yeah. It's going to wreck damage. <laughs> uh, F takes E, D takes E, and now... Yeah, I think Castle. when I looked at this game, I think I made one inaccuracy in the game. Uh, I could be wrong, but I remember analyzing it. And almost almost every move was a top stockfish move. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it was it was just one move. Yeah, I, and I can't remember if, if the computer liked bishop e one. It, it said it was okay, but it might have it might have preferred bishop e two. I can't remember. Yeah, though it's so natural for a human being to come to b one because you always want to to just uh, go queen d3 and Yeah, and I figured and it's going to be to... temporary. I'm going to kick out the knight, so he's not going to stay there for long. Yeah, actually this knight b4 doesn't help him at all. It, it's usually a very bad move if black doesn't achieve anything concrete. And that's what happened here. He most probably lost at this point. You played a3 and he went back to a6 because he can't go to c6 because of knight takes c6. Uh, at least I believe he can do this. Uh, well, yeah, he, yeah, he, nice. he, yeah, he has to go knight a6. Yeah. And if he has to come here, then things are not going, going well for him. Queen c2, and you, you're breaking. He can't play. I loved queen c2. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, his, his pieces are a wreck. I mean, this is mm -hmm. just very sad. Uh, he didn't do anything that... I know, I know. That's that. what I'm saying. That this It's such yeah. a natural-looking move, this bishop e7. It looks totally fine, but um, white kind of just pounces upon upon that. But it looks totally fine when you play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks so natural. And then you're just lost. Yeah. <laughs> G4... Knight takes c5 while well, he, he tried to muddy the water. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. And like the fact that you lured him out and you made a king chase. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think when I analyzed it after the computer, this is like mate and six or something with the knight. I looked at that, but um, yeah, I ended up going. I thought this was, I thought this was better. But... Yeah, this is pretty. Knight takes d5 check. Uh, takes the five is the only move because the queen is also falling, and queen takes g five. The king is out in the woods. <laughs> it was a spectacular game. Yeah. I really like nice miniature. Uh, I, yeah, I thought it, it it deserved to be shown here. <laughs> <laughs> now, why can't okay. that happen over the board? Eh? <laughs> 
Yeah, next time it has to happen <laughs> in another the world tournament. <laughs> it's going to happen. Yeah, that that's it. I that's why I kind of like the Tarash. Like, it's if if Black makes one little misstep, something like this can happen. And and uh, he was probably wondering what happened because it kind of came out of nowhere. It like, I, it doesn't really look like he made a, like a big blunder anywhere. But um, the game, you know. And so quickly. Yeah, and it's uh, probably uh, so. FC sees the move at yeah, this point. Yeah, yeah. Gets to go sits right now. Yeah, and then White takes. That's pretty remarkable. Uh, you don't get to play knight f4 right away, do you? Well, all, all I know is that is the e takes f6 is by far the main line, and um, I feel a little bit yeah. uncomfortable. Um, having the one isolated pawn in the center when I take, um, and that is kind of the one concession in the position, but white gets, I mean, white's going to castle and just have so much, uh, development already. And black is like still two moves away from castling. And, but the, yeah. And so many people will do this. They will, they will, they will place their knights here and they'll, they'll always play queen B six. I think partly because apart from it looking natural, that's actually like the main idea in the knight c3 line. So they're used to putting a queen on b6. and But um, the main line, I believe, the main main line is to, is not queen b6, but an early f6 uh, yeah. take and then f6 right away. That makes sense uh, because he's not getting to create any serious threats on d4. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I think black often gets confused at, at my level because, you know, unless they're familiar with the Tarash, it looks so weird. Um, like, and it looks like it looks like white won't be able to defend on D four, but no, white white white's white's got it all figured out. And and I also like the uh, flexibility often in the Tarash because the um, you can you often have good choices. You can put the knight on F four in many cases, uh, threatening E six, but you can also uh, just put it on g3 kind of like roy lopez style and um and then knight f3 a4 something to, yeah 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 actually the main move by far here is it's queen b6 has a bad score mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, over a lot of games actually mm -hmm. so yeah f6 is a must um and that's pretty remarkable because if you don't really know the ideas, and that's why it's going to work very well, yeah. so level especially. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you go Queen B6 immediately mm -hmm. right yeah. away. Yeah. I would probably play it because I don't really know that much the French. Uh, I would probably play Queen B6 here yeah. and get him to do some trouble. Well, Queen, <laughs> Queen B6 is, is okay, but it's. But also, a lot of people here will play Queen B6 before taking. Actually, I think even more people play this. Uh, or maybe 50 50 before taking on d4 i've i've found this a lot but it, it kind of just transposes um it's the same thing so you have to take yeah it'll uh, it'll transpose yeah um and then but still I, I like i encountered this so much and i think even in one of the one of maybe our third or fourth lesson in the trash remember when i had all the pawns in an over the board tournament game Oh, that was yes. the same thing. He proof? played bishop e7. <laughs> it was bishop e7. Everyone plays ah, it. it was this yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Every, everyone plays that. Everyone plays that. Because f6 is kind of mm -hmm, weird. Yeah. It kind of looks weird. Like black is two moves away from castling. And, but everyone plays this. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, that's, that's why I, if you, um, like I, when I played the game, I, I pretty quickly. Uh, um, I'm going to keep on capitalizing on this. Wait, wait, sorry, take, no. I guess. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what happened in the game? It was, uh, oh, it traded did here he first. See, take this, take this one. Yeah. Oh, did now he, he played f6 before casting. Oh. Uh, yeah, after bishop e7, mm. you castle and then f6. Uh, but yeah, knight f4 looks just too strong. <laughs> yeah, so he, he kind of gave me an answer there. So if he castled, um, Kind of wondering what I what I do. Often in this type of position, I'm I'm kind of torn. Knight of four, maybe. Oh, a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a common. 
often too if like you can't play you can't play uh queen c2 yeah a3 is often a good move but uh, also i'm often considering knight g3 i know that this can't be taken right because of tactics um yeah no, they, but yeah i often try to delay knight g3 just because knight knight f4 is so good in many cases so yeah I'm, it actually makes it so difficult yeah uh, yeah yeah, there are actually some. I'm I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> there are some games by very strong players against uh, uh, against not that strong but pretty strong players. <laughs> One how <laughs> mm. who's playing the candidate now again uh, twenty three hundred and he probably let's see. Oh, interesting. Well, it was Black. A miniature. <laughs> Black, Black was in this position. Uh, yeah, tw two games here from Black. From the yeah. same player, I mean. This Chito was... Karma. Yeah, against two top grandmasters. I don't know how he played. Oh, he was in a big tournament team. He takes what he took with the bishop. Bishop e3. Well, he kind of. He was asking to be punished here by one how. I mean, who plays one how and goes for this? Come on. <laughs> you, you can you cannot be serious. <laughs> you get the chance to play this guy and you take the pawn upon him b2. It's very brave. It was a blowout. He won the queen. Oof. Wow. Well, something has to be wrong here. Yeah. Yeah, this this uh, yeah, no, this can't. No, this is. Yeah, it's it's not well annotated. <laughs> so this isn't this yeah. isn't the. Is this the game? Yeah, but maybe it wasn't played. I'm pretty sure. Because then it. Oh, it's it's a, it is a blitz it's, tournament though. This is blitz. Yeah, it's a blitz tournament. But still, uh, still shouldn't. Yeah, maybe it. Yeah, it might. Yeah, that might be a mistake. Uh, still, if, well, there, there's another game. Let's see if it's more interesting. At least people play a3 here. In the two games, yeah, Van yeah, Kribo yeah. Rusko plays. Yeah, knight, knight b4 is, is a thematic move. Well, this might be more natural, a5. Ah, uh, he played rook b1, so he can go bishop b3, and everything will defend. And yeah, you are, when you force this concession, then there are so many weaknesses. So once you go queen c2, he has to soften his king side. Uh, yeah, yeah. Either by h6 or g6, or g6 mm -hmm. and that's more good news for you. I know, I'm actually surprised. Uh, look, I'm, he's playing I'm, on both sides, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a little surprised that you can't take on g6. It seems like you've got enough pieces to do it, but yeah, uh, I don't. This might have been blitz. Also, he might mm. he might have not been so been so sure after, yeah. for example. Let me see. Bishop takes, h takes, queen takes, bishop g seven, knight g five, knight f six. Um, yeah. Knight F6, but what what about instead of what about bishop bishop h6? Bishop h6, knight yeah. f6, and the queen is defending. Uh, uh. defending g7. Wait, wait, wait. No, but then uh, queen e1. Queen. Sorry, a queen e8. Oh. And so it goes. Uh, okay, take. yeah. Okay, yeah. Take. Yeah, queen, queen takes take. g6. Might work. <laughs> Bishop h6. Bishop h6. Knight f6. Oh. Oh, here I thought you said rook, rook f6. That's when I was thinking queen e8. Oh. Um, but even here. Rook, yeah, it's still, okay. I get, uh, I... It's a mess. <laughs> this is not easy at all. Knight f4, maybe. Bringing more pieces to party like knight f4 to h5 yeah 
Well, I guess he can't go to H5, but... Uh, okay, yeah, I get maybe Black's got enough to hang on, hey? Yeah, it's at least it's difficult to calculate. Yeah. In a mid's game, I wouldn't go for it. Uh, especially you, because... Knight e5? Knight? Too slow or something? Knight e5. Knight e5 now? Yeah. Uh, well, at the very least, he can exchange and go knight e8. Then he, if he gets to play queen f7, he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's probably saving okay. himself. So maybe that's why uh, he he wanted to clear these pawns. Maybe he can put the rook on b3 after. Yeah, he's playing on both sides now because uh, he actually got... Uh, he, he already... Uh, got what he wanted. He he created some weaknesses yeah. on the king side, and those weaknesses are not going away. And now he gets to play on the queen side also, so he yeah. has the advantage all over the board. And this is pretty common in the French. Uh, if white can uh, get an, a space advantage on both sides of the board, then he's probably going to steamroll. This is very good technique. Go b5, knight b4, and he is so. No. <laughs> uh, if five, well, b five is threatened, and if white gets to play b five and bishop f four, I guess it's going to be over very soon. So if five, it's it's not a desirable move now. Pawn is going to be weak, but what well, you can here. Well, and this is a very big advantage to white. Uh, well. Well, this is how a player of my strength loses against a top grandmaster, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> that black king is just... At some point, the king was going to, to be in huge trouble. It then didn't make <laughs> uh, But yeah, I think this one is good. Uh, model game as to what white wants to do. He softened up the king's side depth. He got to play a3, rook b1, b4, and he was playing. He was better over the whole board. So, yeah, f6, a quick f6 might be the, the answer here. Mm -hmm. uh, and avoid uh, avoiding might be advisable. It's pretty remarkable that queen b6 might not be the best move and it actually is like in some sort of trouble. Uh, because it's so natural. Yeah, it's it's a very good variation. Yeah, I, I love it. I, it's, it. It's going to bring you a lot of... Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and the other beautiful thing is I'm never... I never feel threatened. Like, um, I, you know, in the winter where I'm always fighting for my life, making sure I'm not <laughs> going to blunder, but it's kind of hard to, to blunder or make mistakes in this line. It's a really safe line, but an aggressive line. So there's like not really much to lose. Um, for Your idea line. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, so and I say, and unless black, unless black knows theory here, bishop e seven. You're gonna, I'm gonna see. You're gonna see that like eighty percent of the time. It's just. Yeah, yeah people are just going to keep playing that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you okay. for for this lesson. Um, I I will take. I'm gonna take a closer look at it, but I probably will ad, um, adapt that. Um, F4 suggestion by you in the accelerated dragon, um, and it gives me give me. It also gives me a um, framework and and a plan and a guide on what to do out of the opening on that. So it was F4 and kind of just push forward for the most part. Um, yeah, at the very least, you know that if you opt for the other schemes with F3, Queen D2. Uh, it's going to be a tough maneuvering game. Uh, you can't just expect to go F4 immediately after some, and it's very rare that you actually get to play rookie one, knight d5, and play a small plan uh, with F3. It, it starts to look like a real Maroxid game against a sort of hedgehog, and it's a slow play. <laughs> it's, it's going to be slow play if you opt for that. This uh, alternative is well, there might be ways for black to equalize his place uh, very accurately, uh, but it's not so clear because there are not so many games uh, with that variation. It looks 
like why it has good results and it at least it, it gives you the opportunity of putting your feet very natural results very quickly and that's what i was looking for yeah 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 that's the nice thing too it's it's uh, quite a sideline um so people yeah. that are people <laughs> that are well booked up in the accelerated dragon might not might not know or be too familiar with f4 uh at least not they might know like the main move response but they may not know beyond that but that's the beauty of chess nowadays because uh up to that point you're playing uh, a very main line and after after both uh, castle and such instead of going queen d2 which is the absolute main line up to that point you have been playing uh, the main moves but there's always an opportunity to deviate uh, even if you play um, systems which are actually main lines. There are so many available plans. Mm. Uh, even uh, inside the, the very main line, that, uh, that's why there's no need, for example, to to shy away from a certain open, comfortable mm. with certain type of, of positions, because there are always alternatives at many points during the game. So uh, with a little investigating <laughs> with, with uh, some investigation you can always find a way uh, to get a position that you actually like mm. um, and that's the good news about today's chess mm. uh, ma maybe uh, time uh, when you played certain type of opening the idea was well with this is a position opening this is a tactical opening and that's uh, not questionable but uh, nowadays, mm. you can get very different type of issues with the same system, uh, and that actually happens a lot. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, I am okay. going to, uh, yeah, I will definitely look into that F4 and um, maybe take a peek at that Sh uh, Shirov game. And who was the other game? Uh... Uh, Krasenko. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, he loves that. Hey? He loves that four. Ah, I should, yeah, I should look at his games because he seems to be a real proponent of it. <laughs> yeah, he's the specialist here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, yeah, okay, thanks again. Yeah. Oh, wait, I have one last question. Yeah. Um, you don't you don't play in the lead chess titled arenas? Uh, I played once, I believe. I, I always play, well, I always play, not, not always, but uh, every time I get the chance, I play the title Tuesdays on chess.com. Mm. I like the format uh, of the tournament more. I don't get the arenas. You have to win games very fast to uh, add points. It's very strange. For I think I think uh, I think luck is a big factor uh, in in the arenas. Um, yeah, people go berserk. I don't know. Yeah, and I just I, I the thing I don't like about the arenas. I don't like the uh, the bonus. You know, the streak bonus. I don't like that because. Yeah. You can kind of get lucky depending on your matchups and so on. But the reason I ask is because it's such a good uh, opportunity for you to play uh, some, you know, like Magnus and, uh, you know, some top top GMs because... Yeah. Um, especially like... Yeah, those tournaments are great. Yeah. Uh, on chess.com, uh, on title Tuesdays, I came across a lot of strong players. Uh, I played I, against uh, Pirosia, for example. I, I saw... I saw uh, um, Maybe a couple months ago, you you played a game against uh, Eric Hansen, a bullet game. Yeah, Hansen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I yeah I played against him on uh, on that tournament too. Mm. Uh, that three plus two, it was Sicilian. He uh, well, he maneuvered very well. He drove me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. He's uh he's Canadian, so I got a root. Yeah. For, yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> He kept on making me use time on the clock, and <laughs> and that was very annoying. It was uh, <laughs> it was a minute, like he had a minute uh, of advantage by move twenty five or so. Uh, I was in trouble <laughs> <laughs> from that point of view. At least, <laughs> uh, yeah, those those tournaments are great. Yeah, that's right. I, I'm going to play more arenas now that I have the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Yeah, okay. Is it bad? Is it bad timing when the Lee Chess titled arena is on for you? Like I don't know when oh. when it's held. Uh well sometimes mm. 
Yeah, sometimes it was being held where during time when I even lessons, I think. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah, it's... But because it's Saturdays. I believe it's uh... on some Saturdays. I'm not so sure. Mm. Uh, but Tuesdays, uh, yeah, the, the title Tuesday was uh, actually worked very well <laughs> for me because of the time. Uh, well, I think they so, just switched uh, it to um, the last one, which was a few days ago. <clears throat> um, they always used to be one minute, one second increment. And I think for the first time they did a 3-0 and um, titled arena. So I don't know if you like the a little bit more time over Bullet, but... Uh, yeah, I, I play Blitz preferably. I, I'm not good. But I, if, but if I mean you're a titled player, so there's a really good chance for you to play like um, Ali Reza or uh, uh, or yeah, Magnus. Yeah, you play a lot more games in the title arena, so mm. you have more chances to come across those guys. Yeah, uh, in the title Tuesdays, I play a lot of very strong grandmasters, but mm. uh, but you get less chances because it's a nine game tournament. Sometimes oh. ten game tournament. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And you have to start well because if you yes. don't go to two or out of two or three out mm -hmm. of three, then you you're not you're just not going to get a game yeah. against those guys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I hope. To, well, if you do decide to play in a title arena, let me know because uh, I might watch it or, or stream it even. So. Uh, okay, so yeah. so I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. They <coughs> they usually do it. Um, kind of near the beginning of the month. Uh, so there was just one a uh, few days ago, so there probably won't be another one for a little while. But uh, they usually hold they hold one one per month. So. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to play the title Tuesday. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's the first uh, Tuesday of the month, so it's oh, going okay. to be... Uh, yeah. April 7th. Yeah. April 7th, Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday, April 7th. Is yeah. it always at the same time? Uh, uh, that one is uh, at 5 p.m. my time. I okay. Time. Well, uh, <laughs> what time is it there now? Like. Uh, it's 1.30. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so you're four hours ahead. And you said it's 5 p.m.? Yeah, it's your time. Usually at 5 PM, okay, yeah. so ooh, it's not the greatest time for me, but that's about about uh, so noon. Uh, oh, yeah, Pacific <laughs> time. But okay, but okay, um, yeah, th see. thanks again <laughs> for the lesson. Um, I will definitely look at those games and definitely consider F four. Uh, I'll probably ad ad adopt it. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you, Tyler. Okay. See you. Later. Bye.